Today, your privilege is to immerse the individuals that you have prepared just for this occasion as we look forward to the great reunion in heaven when all God's children will be gathered as one on the sea of glass, giving glory to our Lord and our Savior. If we're happy for our elders, let me hear you say amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Today, one of our elders, a champion layman, will be coming at this time to say a word on behalf of our lady, Elder Dexter Pusey, very active in our Lay Workers Federation, and I invite him to come forward at this time and share what is on his heart. Thank you very much. Beloved, I greet you with affection. All of you assembled here this morning from all walks of Central Jamaica Conference and beyond its boundary. We have come, yes, from the cool hills of Manchester, from the plains of Clarendon, and out of Red Hot St. Catherine to celebrate with our elders. What do you say? Yeah. Elders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church are authorized on this day by the president of the field to baptize candidates that they themselves prepared and from their own church. Beloved, as elders and lay workers, we would like to express our gratitude to our conference president, Pastor Levi Johnson, secretary, Pastor Ronnie Henry, treasurer, Pastor Billy Watson, departmental directors and district pastors for the excellent ways they have helped us to execute the roadmap on the year of the laity. If you believe that is all right, lift your hands and give God a praise. This indeed is the year of the laity and not the year of the lazy. Who is to say that this day, September 28th, would just be a figment of imagination. Who is to say that this would not be a reality? After all, going back to the launch of the year of the laity, the church has talked about it, preach about it, pray about it, song about it, prepare candidates for it, and waited for it. The leaders, beloved, of our church in this division have prepared us for this grand occasion. At the launch of the Year of the Laity in Honduras on October 27, 2012, the president of Inter-America Division, Pastor Israel Leto, said the church has been enriched by the hard work of ministers and lay persons and other active members in spreading the gospel in inter-America. And this is why we have designated this important year, 2013, as the year of the laity. Jamaica Union Executive Committee met on the 11th of November 2012 at the headquarters in Mandeville. And it was Pastor Glenn Samuels, personal ministries director of JAMU, who said, in the year of the laity, the union and conference administrations are pursuing an aggressive implementation and execution of the programs of Inter-America Division. Our union president, Pastor Everett Brown, said, and I quote, this is a continuation of partnership with our trained lay people who have assisted ministers over the years in expanding the kingdom of God. And of course, our conference was not left behind because on the 31st of October, 
2012, when the conference committee voted for this program, our own president, Pastor Levi Johnson, said, and I quote, we believe that the program of the division is commendable and we will endeavor to implement the plans in our territory, end of quote. Oh yes, the lay workers of Central Jamaica Conference have contributed to the Year of the Lady program through Bible studies, street meetings, reach, community impact, prayer ministry, federation programs, lay workers and youth, crusades and revivals, child preaching, witnessing program, truck distribution, small group outreach, family life, initiatives, women and men's program, community service impact, and the list goes on and on. Special thanks to our pastor and director of evangelism, Sabbath School and Personal Ministries, Pastor Neville Barrett, for leading the charge of lay workers. Beloved, we have come together to meet with our God, to express our fellowship to the Lord Jesus Christ, and to take our part in the building up of God's church. I pray here today that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the sweet Holy Spirit will be with us all. God bless you. And may we have a productive day in the year of the latest celebration. My sleep is gone, my heart is full of sorrow. I can't forget how much I've let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow. When the sun reveals my broken dreams, Shattered on the ground Please forgive me I need your grace to make it through All I have is you I'm at your mercy Lord, I'm gonna serve you Until my dying day Help others find the way at your mercy. Please forgive me. I can't believe the God of earth and glory would came to die for someone just like me. But I read in the Bible that old story How he pleaded for my forgiveness While he was dying on the tree Please forgive me I need your grace to make it through all I have is you, I'm at your mercy, Lord, I'm going to serve you. Until my dying days, help others find the way at your mercy. We have sinned and come short of his glory, but his forgiveness is sure mm -hmm. please forgive me Lord I need your grace to make it through all I have is you I'm at your mercy Lord 
said, I'm going to serve you until my dying days. Help others find the way at your mercy. Please forgive me, Lord. Lord, forgive me. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord. Please forgive me. We got news last evening of the passing of the secretary of the Central Jamaica Conference, his mother. Let me rush to that. Sister, the late sister Zatilda Henry, the mother of our conference executive secretary, Pastor Ronnie Henry, passed away last evening. Sister Henry was a faithful member of the, the Myland Seventh day Adventist Church, served the church with distinction church clerk, church treasurer, and God gave her almost 100 years. In fact, she was just short of the century. The Central Jamaica Conference, the administration, the departmental directors, and all of our pastors and the other workers of the church and members, we mourn with our conference secretary, Pastor Ronnie Henry. I ask that you continue to pray for him and the other members of that family that God will give them coping strength as they go through the morning. It's my very special privilege this morning to present the one who will bring us the spiritual charge as we go through this very special service here at Camp Verley. Pastor Richard Sebastian Jackson was born and raised in the parish of Westmoreland. He began his ministry in 2001 in the Wolverhampton in Wolverton, Hampton, England. He was ordained to the gospel ministry in 2006. And in 2008, he accepted a call to serve in the Turks and Caicos Islands Mission as its executive secretary. Since then, Pastor Jackson has returned to England and continues to give outstanding service in the work of the Lord. He serves presently as the ministerial secretary of the North England Conference. And I'm happy to say to this congregation this morning that the brothers and brethren who have come, these pastors who have been with us for the past seven, eight days, lifting up the Lord Jesus Christ, he leads the forces and we're delighted for the ministry they have brought to the Central Jamaica Conference. Pastor Jackson is strongly supported in ministry by his wife, Angela, and they are blessed with two children, Talitha and Samuel. We believe today God has a word through the servant of his, and I would like to welcome him to the podium here at Camp Verde to share with us that which the Lord has laid on his heart. I know you will be praying for him even as he comes forward. Before he shares the charge, the Portmore Youth Choir will bless our hearts with a special item of music. i 
started out with Jesus at a very early age. Yes, I've known him nearly all of my life. And I admit there have been times when I faltered along the way. But I'm determined I've got to make it in. You see, I've got a charge on my life. And I've got a job to do. And I can't stop until it's through. Because I'm determined. I've got a made up mind. I can't stand around wasting my time. I'm going to keep on working for Jesus every day of my life. Every day of my life, cause I've got heaven on my mind. Oh, I don't have time to waste criticizing someone else. Come on. There's some things I'd rather leave behind. Let me say this again. I don't have time to be bothered with the words he said, that she said, that they said. All I can afford to do is to keep my own self in line. Listen, church, we've got to work while it's day, for the night is surely coming. I'm going all, all the way. Cause I'm determined I've got a made of mind Made of mind I can stand around Wasting my time I'm gonna keep on working for Jesus Every day of my life Every day of my life Cause I've got heaven Church say amen. amen. We give God
God the praise. Turn with me to John chapter 14. A very known and familiar passage of scripture. John chapter 14, and we're going to read from verses 1 through to 6. The Bible says, let not your heart be troubled. He believed in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. And whether I go, he know, and the way he know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Verse 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, Heavenly Father. You know that I'm unworthy, but I thank you that I've placed my life in the hands of the one who is worthy. And I ask today that you will open my mind, touch my brain, be with your waiting congregation, in Jesus' name. Simple tiger today, trust me. That's what Jesus say, trust me. Have we ever had one of those days when everything just go wrong? It doesn't make any difference how hard you try it just seems that everything backfires on you. The harder you try, the worse it gets. And I'm convinced that all of us here today have had days like that. There are times, I suppose, when things really start to go wrong. Your whole world seems to be crumbling around you and you wonder what is going on. That is probably what was happening in, in, in John chapter 14. The apostles, the disciples, perhaps they were feeling this way because their week began gloriously with Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem and people waving palm branches and they were shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of Israel. Even the Pharisees and the chief priests who had been plotting against Jesus had cried out in despair. In John chapter 12 and verse 19, he says, see, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world, the entire world has gone after him. But Jesus had not come to establish an earthly kingdom and he refused the crown. Disappointed and thwarted in their dreams of a Jewish kingdom with Jesus as their miracle working king, the fricker crowd began to change. And soon the priests were once again seeking someone to betray Jesus into their hands. So as John chapter 14 opens, we see Jesus and his apostles in the upper room where they have eaten the Passover meal together. Jesus knew exactly what the next few hours would bring. He was going to be crucified. He knew Judas 
would have betrayed him. He knew about the illegal trial of the night and how troubled the apostles would be. He knew of the cross and the borrowed tomb and he tried to prepare the apostles for all that. So he began to comfort them. Is there any one of us here inside this place this morning needs comfort? I know that many of us, we do need comfort this morning. We have lost loved ones. Many of us come Monday morning, we don't have a job. Many of us have physical problems. Others of us are lonely and depressed. We all experience some kinds of trouble. But Jesus says today that part of the solution to a troubled heart is trust in me. So what does it mean to trust? Uh, I looked in the Webster Dictionary and it says it's the basic dependence on someone or something or belief that something will happen or someone will act in a prescribed way. Trust is found in our unserving belief that the God of heaven will indeed work on our behalf to bring his perfect will for our lives into being. I want us to understand today, you, you cannot believe that even Moses trusted God to deliver the Israelites at the Red Sea. It only happened because he trusted God. Joseph trusted God while he languished in Pharaoh's prison. David trusted God for a victory when he was facing Goliath. Jonah trusted God to answer his power in the belly of the whale. Peter and John trusted God as they stood before the Sanhedrin and gave their defense of the Christian faith. And so I'm saying to us today in Camp Verley, the only way we can meet the problems that come, the only way we can really roll over the situation is by trusting God. Two things this morning God wants us to trust in. Number one, he wants us to trust in his presence. Verse one says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. What is Jesus saying there? Is he saying, you trust in God? Now it's time to trust also in me? Or is he, is he saying, you trust in God, now it's time to trust also in me? Or is he really, really saying, I know you trust in God and you also trust in me? And he's saying to us, now remember, Camp Verley, when you can no longer see me, don't stop trusting in me. You see, we've always found it easier to trust in things that we can see and touch. That's how we are. We have a little bit of Thomas in us, don't we? Remember in John chapter 25, Thomas said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. So Jesus shows him and he believes. But then Jesus told him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed what the church says. The Bible teaches that the things we can see are only temporary. The vehicle in which we drive to church this day is only temporary. This building that we are in, it's only temporary. The chairs that we are sitting on, they are only temporary. All have been subject to decay. And you know what happened today? When we look in the mirror and see our aging bodies 
and realize that they are only temporary. All the things you can see and touch are only here for a little while and then they're gone. But the things you can't see last forever. This is a hard lesson for us to learn, isn't it? Yet it is an important lesson because when we face troubles and difficulties in life, we need to remember as Christians that Jesus has promised, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he says, trust in my presence. The second and final point I want to make is that Jesus says, trust in my promises. In verse 2 and 3 of John chapter 14, the Bible says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there he may be also. What a promise! What a promise! God gave many promises, both in the Old and the New Testament. He promised the children of Israel a land where there would be milk and honey. It took a little while for the promise to be fulfilled, but finally, it was fulfilled, what do you say? He promised a Messiah that took a long time, but it too was fulfilled. Jesus, the Savior, was born. Now God promises that he is coming back for us. Someday we will be with him forever and ever. And I'm so delighted today that all of us that are here, whether you have been baptized, yes or no, the promise is still standing. Sometimes we grow impatient, but the scripture says we can trust the promises of God. And you know what happened? This promise will be fulfilled too. The Bible uses a lot of different words to describe heaven because that's where we are going. In one place, it is called a country, indicating the vastness of heaven. In another, it is called a city, indicating the number of us that will be there. In another place, it is called a kingdom, indicating that there is a governmental structure to it all. In another place, it is called paradise, indicating its beauty and desirability. But here in John chapter 14, it is called my father's house. And that is another way of saying this will be home. Home is a place where we can be ourselves, because that's what Jesus is longing for us to do. Home is where we can take off our shoes or our clothes. We can just skid off our feet and relax. Home is where we can say what we are thinking. Home is where we're always accepted and loved. You're not a guest. You are a resident. You live there. And that is home. So Jesus is saying, I'm going to take you to my father's house. And it will be your home too. What do you say? You'll be part of the family. You'll be home where you belong. But I want us to, 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 to look at this passage carefully. Because the Bible says in the King James, in my father's house are many mansions. But you will later discover that the word mansion does not really describe what, what heaven should really be. In other translations, in my father's house are many rooms. Hmm? And probably the best translation would have been dwelling place or rooms. 
You say to me, Pastor, what are you saying? The King James Version is wrong? I am not saying that. You see, the word that Jesus used comes from the Eastern custom that when a son grows up and gets married, he brings his bride back. He brings her back again. And the father adds another room unto his house for them. Then when another son grows up and gets married, they add another room. The house just keeps getting bigger and bigger as the family stays together. It's not like now when many of us would like our sons and our daughters to just get married and go. No, Jesus wants us to be with him. So in my father's house are many rooms. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward for that day. What do you say? Yeah. My father's house. Jesus said, how many rooms I am going there to prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me. We are almost home church. Don't become discouraged or faint-hearted. We're almost home. So today, whatever your burdens are, the solution to a troubled heart is still the same. To trust. God has made a promise that he will never forsake those who seek him. The promise that God made so long ago is still valid today because God has never broken a promise yet. He is true and faithful to his people. What do you say? So that is why he said in Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 7, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away, you don't hear me today, all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And I like verse 5. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And verse 6 says, And he that said to me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of water of life freely. He that overcometh, praise God, shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Let me end this morning by sharing with you that heaven is far more than just a figment of the imagination. It is far more than the sentiment of a lofty vision. It is far more than a dream seen through rose-colored glasses. It is far more than just a doctrine of theological belief. I want us to know this morning that heaven is a place where graves never will open. Gates will never close. Tears will never fall. Hearts will never break. Tempers will never rise. Shame will never enter. Problems will never occur. Eyes will never grow dim. Friends will never part. Jealousy will never exist. Rejoicing will never stop. Doubts will never rise. Distance never matters. And a place, heaven will be, where blessing never ceases. So today, you don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. 
Because joy will come in the morning. Trouble, they don't last always. For there is a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. With Jesus, I can take it. With him, I know I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. Let me end. I call this my signature. I preach with this conviction because the one in Jesus who said, trust me, we must always believe that irrespective of what comes. Those of you who have heard me preach before, you have heard me say this. His word is true. His motives are pure. His ways are just. His peace is perfect. His power is unlimited. His wisdom is unequal. His touch is refreshing. His eyes are compassionate. His hands are outstretched. His miracles are matchless. His spirit is quickening. His blessings are many. And his grace is sufficient. That's the one who says we are to trust him to the lonely. He's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. To the surgeon, he's the sword that divides the soul and the spirit. To John the Baptist, he's the Lamb of God that take it away, the sins of the world. To the Satan, satanic serpent of the Garden of Eden, he's the head bruiser. To the altar, he's the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. To the florist, he's the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, and the bright and morning star. To chaos, he speaks. Sorry, to war, he speaks. To chaos, he's order. To crisis, he's the solution. To discouragement, he's hope. To solitude, he's company. To poverty, he's rich. To weakness, he's power. To mourning, he's laughter. To ignorance, he's knowledge. When I am weak, he's strong. When I'm lost, He's the way. When I am afraid, he's my courage. When I stumble, he steadies me. When I'm hurt, he heals me. When I'm broken, he mends me. When I'm blind, he leads me. When I'm hungry, he feeds me. When I face trials, he's with me. When I face persecution, he shields me. When I face problems, he comforts me. When I face loss, he provides for me. And even when I face death, he is the resurrection and the life. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced and he's pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings peace. He reigns and brings power. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. The universities can't explain him. The leaders can't ignore him. Herod couldn't kill him. The Pharisees couldn't confuse him. The people couldn't hold him. Nero couldn't crush him. Hitler couldn't silence him. And the new age can't replace him. He had no home, but he promised believers a mansion. He had no bakery, but he, he produced bread to feed 5,000 men beside women and children. He had no medication or hospital, but yet he healed the sick. He had no money, but yet he paid his friends taxes. He attended no college or university, but yet he taught, not as a scribe, but as one having the authority and holding a PhD degree. You don't, you don't understand what I'm talking about this morning. That's the one who says, trust me. He was born in a borrowed stable. He was laid in a borrowed cattle manger. He used as his pulpit a borrowed boat. He fed thousands with a borrowed lunch. He taught from a borrowed book. He slept in a borrowed bed. He rode as king on a borrowed donkey. He observed the Last Supper in a borrowed room. 
He was mocked as king in a borrowed robe. He was crucified on a borrowed cross. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. But early that Sunday morning, when the woman went to the tomb, they found that the stone had been rolled away. My Jesus had no borrowed life. He said in John 10, verse 17 and 18, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I receive from my father. The one who says, trust me, rose from the mist of the rock. Jesus rolled away the rock that sealed the rock, that entombed the rock, that was the rock of ages. And the rock of ages walk out of the heart of the rock with power. And he says, trust me. this time we have three or four elders who will be sharing with us in the examination. We have Elder Watson and she'll be taking the first four. Then we have Elder Forbes. She'll be doing the next set and the final five will be done by Elder Moving. Each elder represents one of the three parishes in our conference. Elder Watson is St. Catherine Elder Forbes, Manchester, Elder Movin, Clarendon. So at this time, we will begin the public examination. Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins? and give you a new heart? And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept his promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home, and before the world. Thank you. And do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Amen. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will? Is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and the memorial of creation? Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? As you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation by using your talents in personal soul winning endeavoring to help others 
to be ready for his glorious appearing? Amen. Amen. Do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of this prophecy, the gift of prophecy, is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? Amen. Do you believe in church organization? And is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithe and offering? And do you purpose by the grace of God with your personal effort and your influence? Do you believe your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it? Avoiding the use of that which is harmful, abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco in all its form for human consumption, and for, from the misuse or trafficking of narcotics and other drugs, Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Do you purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by offering your life, by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized? as a public expression of your faith in Christ and the forgiveness of your sins? Do you accept the, and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is a remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation and of the world church? Thank you. Those are the 13 questions. And we have witnessed the response of the candidates in the affirmative to all 13. I now ask a baptized member of the church to make a motion that they be accepted as members of the church subject to their baptism. It is moved. Is there a second? It is seconded. All in favor, please show by your uplifted right hands. I'm going to ask the candidates to turn around and look. Candidates don't need to raise their hands, you know. We're voting you. <laughs> All right. Now, these are those representing the family of God here on earth who are joyful and happy to say welcome into the family. But it may be that there's someone or others here who do not agree. And we will now give you the privilege to, to, to make that known if you are not in agreement that they be members of the church subject to baptism, you now raise your right hand. Now I'll ask you candidates, look around again. I didn't see any hand. I don't know if any of you saw any. And I'm sure in heaven, there's no one who would stand between you and Jesus. And we are very happy for you. We rejoice with you. And we give God thanks for you. Know that in coming into the church, you come to be co-laborers with Jesus. As you will use the gifts he will bestow on you in the service of his church. As we work to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing. This time we're going to invite the congregation to stand as we'll have a special prayer offered at this time. Eternal Father God, we bow in your presence, Lord, because you are almighty. You are awesome. You are creator God and there's none like you. Father God, these robed before us 
They have made a decision, Lord God, to follow you, to be your disciples. In the name of Jesus Christ, whose blood on Calvary was spilled for us, I present them before your throne as tokens of the reaping harvest of the Central Manchester Conference in the name of Jesus. Father God, I ask that your spirit, Lord, may now anoint them from the crown of their very heads to the sole of their very feet. Father God, we present them before you. Their challenges, their visions, their dreams, their goals, their aspiration, their determination, their faith in you, O oh God. We ask that you may take them today, Father, that you may mold them, that you may make them, that you may recreate them. But first, Lord, break them down. Break them down, Father, and like a potter molding the clay, now remodel them, refashion them, remake them into that image that you require. We pray, Father, that each and every one of them, Father, may not just join the church to warm the pews, but, Father, they may join, Lord, enlisted in your army. We need workers, O oh God, to go forth into the vineyard. Was it not you, O oh Lord, who said that the harvest is ready, but laborers are few? with some 7 billion people to reach in the world and just over 16 million Adventists, Lord. The challenge is great. So, Father, as they go down into the watery grave, my prayer, Lord, is that they come up, Lord, they may come up with more anointing, come up, Father, with more zeal, Come up, Father, with more determination. They may come up, Lord, knowing full well, Lord, that challenges will come. The enemy of the kingdom will not sit back, Lord, and watch this go by. He's already scheming and plotting and planning their downfall. But, Father, the Bible says a righteous man is defined by one who falls seven times, but get back up again. Father, my word today is that they may know that you love them. They may, not, they may know that you care for them. And as they go down into the watery grave today, Lord God, we pray, Jesus, that they may, before they go, indeed surrender all to Jesus. Lay aside every burden. Cast it at your feet, O Holy One. And then, Lord Jesus, may you draw close to them with the healing oil and the balm, we pray. May you deal with them individually. Now, Father, we pray, not just for these before us who are robed, but for their family respectively. Lord God, may they go back and be a witness. May they go back to their various respective work and school and colleges and universities, wherever they are coming from, Father. Go back after day, today. Go back and lift up Jesus. Go back and lift high the standard. Go back and demonstrate what it is like to be a Seventh-day Adventist living in the 21st century. Go back. And make sure you lift up Jesus. Make Jesus your focus. Jesus your guide. Jesus your love. Jesus your compassion. Father God, may your spirit now anoint them, we pray. As the water wash over them today. May your Holy Spirit wash over them and may you give them the peace they need and the direction required. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, my Master. brothers and sisters, upon the profession of your faith, in Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sin. As pastors and elders, we now baptize you 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. You can make the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. You can take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, no turning back. Praise the Lord, no turning back. Do not go with me, yet still I follow. Do not go with me, yet still I follow. Do not go with me, yet still I follow. No turning back, praise the Lord, no turning back. The cross before me, the cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back. Praise the Lord, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. Praise the Lord, no turning back. You can take the whole world. But give me my Jesus. Oh, you can take the whole world. Oh, yes. But give me my Jesus. Now, now. You can take the whole world. But give me my Jesus. No turning back. Praise the Lord, no turning back. The cross before me. Oh, the world behind, behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. That cross before me, that world behind me. No turning back, praise the Lord, no turning back. My brothers and sisters, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, as pastor and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. What a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arm. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arm. Me, me, oh Lord, I say, and you're the one I You have the change clothes for someone who needs them right now, so please take them to the changing area. Akeem Law, please take the clothes to the changing area. Oh, how sweet to walk. Oh, how sweet to walk in this silver way. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, how like the black clothes from day to day. Leaning on the everlasting That's why I'm leaning Leaning The same as yours From all that I'm Leaning 
Okay, elders, you will have your candidates walk behind you to the baptismal pool. Akeem, Akeem, Jason is waiting on you. He is very cold at this time, Akeem. Jason is waiting on you with his clothes. Come right up to the front. Akeem, Jason is waiting on you. Come right up to the front. I'm pressing on the upward way. New highs I'm gaining every day. Still praying the I onward bound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up, and I shall stand by faith on it, then save a land, a higher place that I have found. Lord, plant my feet. On higher ground, my heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fear dismay, though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my head is higher ground. Lord, lift me up. And I shall stand by faith on it, and save land. I am that I have found. Lord, let my feet on higher ground. My brothers and sisters, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Let the church of God now say, Amen. Amen. I want to live above the world. Though Satan darts at me are heard, my feet has joyful sound the song of saints on higher ground Lord lift me up and I shall set my faith on it when stable land a higher place I have found Lord let my feet on higher I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I pray till heaven I found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and I shall stand by me on it. Lord, let my feet on higher ground. 
Lord lift me up, and I shall stand, and it's on it, and save land, I am made, I am found, Lord plant my Check it, check it. By the grace of God, Lord, I am saved. By the grace of God, I am saved. Glory. My brothers and sisters, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sins, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Let God's people say, Amen. Amen. I have been walking and in hand with Jesus, that's why I'm saved. Yes, Lord, I have been walking and in hand with Jesus. That's why I'm saved. Oh, glory, 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 Jesus. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. By the grace of God. I am saved by the grace of God, Lord, I am saved by the grace of God. With Jesus, that's why I'm saved. Oh, yes, Lord, I have been walking and in hand with Jesus, and that's why I'm saved. Oh, glory, 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 Jesus, Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. By the grace of God, I am saved. By the grace of God, Lord, I am saved. By the grace of God, I am saved. Complain. I can complain. Who do you turn to when life is hard? 
Then I ask, Lord, give me strength All right. to rise again. Then I look. We are waiting on them for the pronouncement at the sign. They just lifted their hands. My, my brothers and sisters, okay. upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let God's church say, Amen. Amen. Life has been so good. I can't complain. Then I ask, Lord, give me strength to rise again. When I look, when I look, what do you look on? On the struggles. On those struggles I undergo. Oh, I listen, yes, I listen, for his call. Let me hear the chorus now, heaven sounding sweeter. Heaven sounding sweeter all the time. Seems like lately, it's always. On my mind Someday Someday I'll leave This world behind Come on now For heaven Sounding sweeter All the time It's hard, it's painful It's so hard to lose a loved one to the grave. Yes. But I know we have the strength have the strength that Jesus gave. Oh God, all those tears drop. All those tears drop. Jesus in the, the land beyond the skies. Beyond the Come skies. on, let's make the chorus together as we sing this today. Heaven sound is sweeter all the time. Seems like lately, the world has hung around us. Seems like lately, heaven is always. It's always. Always on my mind. mind. Yes, Lord. Oh, Okay, send us some more candidates. Send us some more candidates. Thank you. Sound more candidates. Freedom. All, All the time. Seems like it is. It's always on my mind. Oh. in the pool at this time. Let's see if they have the pronouncement. Right. There's 
still getting ready. Let's do another one. I'm only a pilgrim and stranger. You don't have to worry. In this unfriendly world that I know. Come on now. But Jesus. But Jesus, who's brought me from darkness, has promised, has promised me a heavenly home. In the Bible. In the Bible, we read of that we read city. Of that who's there Who's still there and who there is not? Someday when this life is over, this beautiful sign I'll be home. I'm longing, I'm longing for home. Let's sun go down. I don't care. I want to go Upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. When the last three miles have been traveled, and the gate of that city swings wide Oh, what a grand feel it will be To know that heaven is mine Beyond the dark scales of sorrow With Jesus forever I'll be But to that city I'm going be all the Savior Let's to me. Sing that for us now as we believe it. I'm longing for home. The sun going down. I want to go home. Sweet rest and be found. I'm just about. With this old house of clay, I'm leaving this world for glory someday. When the last weary miles have been traveled, and the gates of that city swing wide, oh yes, oh what. A grand feeling will be to know that heaven is mine. To know that heaven is mine. And Beyond the dark scales of sorrow, oh, with Jesus forever I'll be. But to that city I'm going. Be all oh, the Savior to me. Oh yes, I'm longing for home. I'm longing for home. The sun going down. I want to go away. Sweet rest can be found. I'm just about to. With this whole house of green, I'm leaving this world for glory someday. I'm longing for home. The sun going down. We have all the candidates in the pavilion at the pool, all the candidates for baptism. Please send them to the pool or the right. pools at this time. All the candidates. They are now ready for the rest of us. I don't. Okay. Let me see. Elders and candidates, please stand. Okay.
So all elders and their candidates, in the same way that we have been moving, will now move to the pool. Elders leading, the candidates you're going to be baptizing will stand or walk behind you. Oh Lord, I'm striving, trying to make it to this barren land, Lord. But as I go from day to day, I hear, I can hear my Savior say, "Trust me, child. Come on, I hold your hand. Come on, everybody now." I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain, and I must hold to God. Come on, everybody now! His powerful hand. I'm coming up. I'm coming up, Jesus, on the rough side of the mountain. And I'm doing my best to make it in. I'm coming up, Lord. I'm coming up, Lord. Although my burden sometimes it really press me down. But as I stand before God's throne, all my heartaches will be gone. I'm looking, I'm looking for my sorry crown. Come on, everybody now. I'm coming up, I'm coming up, Jesus. On the rough side of the mountain. And I must hold to God, hold on his powerful hand. I'm coming up. And I'm doing my best to make it. You know, I just like this verse. This whole race will soon be over. Soon there'll be no more race for me to run. But if I can only keep the faith, I've got strength just to run this race. I hear my Savior say, Welcome, old and child. Sing that chorus I'm, coming I'm coming up, up I'm coming, coming up, up Jesus, on the rough up, side of the mountain. And I must hold to God, hold on, His power. I'm coming up, I'm coming up, Jesus. On the rough side of the mountain, and I'm doing my best to make it in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Joe. This old race will soon be over. Soon there'll be no more race for me to run. But if I can only Keep the faith. I've got strength just to run this race. I hear my Savior say, Welcome on, child. I'm coming, I'm coming up, Jesus. On the rough side of the mountain. And I must hold to God in His powerful hand. I'm coming up on the rough side of the mountain, and I'm doing my best to make it in. Shall we praise the Lord? Shall we praise Him another time?
all of you who are going through some misfortune in your life and you don't just don't know what to do your burdens must be hard I recommend you to the Lord he's a friend and I know he cares for you so go on and keep the faith God has a better place where no rain or no flood can bother you my lord you just hold your head up high and try to smile if you can for i know that the sun will shine again do you know that the sun will shine again i know that the sun will shine again I know that the sun will shine again you just hold your head up high and try to smile if you can for I that the sun will shine again. My brothers and sisters, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. Some of you have lost your homes some of your families and friends are gone child don't worry because the lord is on your side my lord whatever it is you're going through he'll make a way a way for you He's a friend, and I know He will provide. My Lord, child, don't worry, and don't you fret. God never fail us yet. Oh, just be glad that you know you are His child, my Lord. You just hold your head up high and try to smile if you can. For I know that the sun will shine again. I know that the sun. I know that the sun will shine again. You just hold your head up high and try to smile if you can. For I know that the sun will shine again. Elder Davis. Okay. Elder Davis, please approach the pool to do your baptizing of candidates. Elder Davis. Diamond Acres. Diamond Acres. All right. While we're waiting on that, those candidates who are baptized, if you have left your bag with the wet clothing Calling in. Elder Davis from Diamond Acres. 
the change in areas, we're asking you to please get them. If you have not collected your lunch tickets, we're asking you to also do so. Those candidates so who have Aline been So, Williams, please take the clothes for the candidates immediately. Please do so. Thank you. To the pool right now. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below A little silver and a little gold But in the city where the ransom will shine I want a mansion with silver light I've got a mansion just over the hilltop in that dry land where we'll never go home and someday yonder we'll never more wander we'll walk on street light with pure as gold often before when tormented and woke I'm not discouraged. Candidates to come. Please send them right away. All candidates to be baptized, please ensure that they are at the pool immediately. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior from sin, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you in the name of the Father of the Son, and of the sweet Holy Spirit, let the church of God say amen. amen. It's glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down. It's glory, glory, hallelujah, since I laid my burden down it's glory glory hallelujah since i lay my burden down it's glory glory hallelujah since i lay my burden down well i'm feeling just like singing since I laid my burdens down well I'm feeling just like singing my Lord since I laid my burdens down well it's glory glory hallelujah since I laid my burden down it's glory glory hallelujah since i live my burden down well i'm feeling just like shouting since i live my burden down Praise the Lord. We're almost at the end of our baptism. There might be another. Yes, there is another candidate. We're going to ask the musicians to hold because we are about to end the service. I, we are making the final announcement. If there is any other candidates to baptize, you will come to the Pools. At this time, we have the final candidate in the pool, and I'm going to ask the musicians to hold the singing as we close off the first part of our celebration. My dear sister, upon the profession of your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal Savior from sin, as pastors and elders, we now baptize you 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We, we have completed the first part of our celebration. I've just gotten the, the figure that this morning we have baptized 173 persons. To God be the glory. We give him all the praise. We give him all the honor and all the glory. Special thanks to all the elders, all the pastors, the deacons and deaconesses who have uh, assisted in ensuring that these 173 persons were buried in baptism. We are going to close at, at this time for lunch. We have provided lunch for the elders who conducted the baptism and all the candidates that were baptized. You will go under the, the tent provided, a black and white tent. Immediately after lunch, we will reconvene in the auditorium for the award service. That service will begin at three. We will bow our heads for prayer at this time. Great God and our Heavenly Father, we want to register our gratitude to you, Lord, for what has transpired here today at Camp Verley. We know the angels in heaven are rejoicing. We are all rejoicing too, Lord. Soon and very soon, Lord, we know that the preaching of the gospel will be over. Soon and very soon, we know that baptisms will be over. Soon and very soon, we will be seeing you coming in the clouds of glory as King of kings and Lords of lords. Until then, Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to be true since we ask it all in Jesus' holy name. Let the church say, Amen. Amen.